الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على من بعثه الله رحمة للعالمين To proceed once again we resume the series that we started on how the fitna in Yemen all began and how certain mashayikh got involved This is so لِيَهْلِكَ مَنْ هَلَكَ عَنْ بَيِّنَا وَيَحْيَا مَنْ حَيَّ عَنْ بَيِّنَا وَإِنَّ اللَّهَ لَسَمِيُّنْ عَلِيمٌ that we all could be upon clarity regarding what has passed and also that we can take life lessons and consideration from what has taken place of trials this is only to increase us in awareness that the believer and the pious one, he increases in tabassur, he increases in insight after going through a phase of trials, of challenges of life and experiences where he looks back and sees what, goes, what has taken place. So my method of approach in doing so is presenting the timeline of events so a person could see for himself and judge accordingly with an eye of insaf, of equity and justice and fairness where a person ent- looks into the affair with an open heart asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala an yahdiyahu li makhtulifa fihi min al-haqqi bi'idhni asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to guide him in relation to what has occurred of differences of opinion. So today of this series, it is relation number one about how a Sheikh Abdullah al-Bukhari got involved into the fitna in Yemen, or in other words, how did it began the refutations between him and also Sheikh Yahya ibn Ali al-Hajuri. Before going any further, I wanted to mention a side issue of a testimony for myself that I believe it was in the year 2007, if I remember correctly. I was contacting a number of scholars and mashayikh about the fitna in Yemen. And from those who I happened to contact it was Sheikh Abdullah al-Bukhari. I called him on his cell phone. I was with a number of other individuals who were with me at that time. And I asked him, there are people warning from the Maj, uh, do you advise us to go to the Maj? Really at that time I was gathering statements of my shaykh against those who are warning. I was gathering statements. And I asked him on his opinion and from what was apparent to me is that he kept refusing when I asked him what's your view about the Maj? do you advise to go to the Maj? he kept mentioning other centers of knowledge and he kept insisting not to answer my question when I was asking him do you advise to go to the Maj? So this is something uh, that I wanted to mention as a testimony for myself that it was apparent at the year of 2007 or the year 2008 that Sheikh Abdullah al-Bukhari what was apparent he was had a similar stance of Sheikh Ubaid al-Jabri a warning from the Maj, although he did not announce anything at that time. So I want to mention something further that took place so we can see the context and the timeline of events. So some time, months before the year 2009, 1431 Hijri calendar, uh, Sheikh Abdullah Bukhari received a phone call from Indonesia 
asking about the visit of Sheikh Muhammad Mani and also Sheikh Hassan Qasim al Rimi. And this is how the affair of Sheikh Abdullah Bukhari got involved from mainly from this phone call. We will play parts of that phone conversation, which is about 45 minutes. The full phone conversation is available online for anyone who can return back to it. So they can see even further the context of speech as we play these parts, inshallah. <laughs> سأل الشيخ عن هذه الدورة دورة الريمي هذا وبالمانع نعم فالشيخ قال أنا أنصحكم في عدم الحضور فالرجلان نعم. متلوثان بأفكار الحجوري So a questioner contacted Sheikh Ubey al-Jabri and asked about the visit the upcoming visit of Sheikh Muhammad Mani and also Sheikh Hassan Qasim al raimi at that time to Indonesia and here it mentions that Sheikh Urbayd al-Jabri has found an audio he warns from those two being that he says they are both polluted with the ideologies of Yahya Ali al-Hajuri as quoted والإشكال رضى الله فيكم شيخنا الأخ لقمان قبل الأيام اتصل بشيخ ربيع واتطلب طبعا من الشيخ فالشيخ قال أنتم لا تصطدموا معهم تكرموهم وتتلطفون بهم وهكذا So now he says but the problem lies that another questioner, a person by the name Luqman, contacted Sheikh Rabia, asking him his advice concerning the visit of those two Yemeni Mashaikh coming. And here he mentions that Sheikh Rabia advises not to clash with them and that you should be uh, kind and polite towards them and also that you should honor them. So here, Sheikh Abdullah Bukhari uh, was apparent that he objects to the advice of Sheikh Rabia to these individuals by saying that it's not necessary for you to honor them. So here now, the person addressing or speaking to Sheikh Abdullah Bukhari tells him that there is clear contradiction between Sheikh Ubaid al-Jabri's speech and also Sheikh Rabia's speech concerning the upcoming visit. So the person speaking to Sheikh Abdullah Bukhari says that the brothers are in a state of confusion as a result of those two speech. So Sheikh Abdullah Bukhari here uh, says that Sheikh Rabia intends that you do not have a clash for verily it will have a bad impact upon your da'wah. Also, from what was mentioned in this phone conversation, is the following. So the person speaking to Sheikh Abdullah Bukhari from Indonesia says that it reached us that Yahya al-Hajuri warns from their Dora. That they were setting up the conference. So 
So Sheikh Abdullah Bukhari responds by saying, in all cases, if he warns from it, then he is the one that's being warned from it. Uh, he says, what are we distributing or propagating innovations? And he says, why does he warn from this dawra, this conference? And then the person says that it is his statement saying that he, it is organized by his biyun, people of biased partisanship. So here, uh, Sheikh Abdullah Bukhari responds by saying, he has indeed lied and has become wicked and uh, maybe a stone be thrown into his mouth. He says, if this, this is the case, if it is affirmed that he said this, so here he goes on to say, May Allah give them all what they deserve, them and their teacher, if this is affirmed on them. And then he goes on to say, which means, May Allah fight against them all. Also from what takes place in this audio of this phone call is the following. He's speaking about the advice of Sheikh Rabia saying that whoever doesn't take his advice, then for him no honor, absolutely. He says that the Sheikh gave a recommendation or an advice to all, and it's mandatory. He says, wajib that it's executed, his advice. He goes on to say that whoever desires to take this advice becomes happy, and whoever does not, then he falls into sin. Also from what takes place in this phone conversation is the following. So he goes on to say, uh, to justify what his criticism about the Maj, by saying, what is this the Maj? It's not the case that everyone that comes from it is, is Salafi. It wasn't that the affair when Sheikh Mubil had was there running it. So he goes on to mention the affair that is relation to Sheikh Mubed's era. ومواقفه رحمه الله تلك التي ما كانت تسر سنيا وما كان يوافقه عليها أحد من العلماء لا. So he goes on to speak about the affair of Sheikh Mubil and that his speech towards Saudiya and that none from the scholars was in agreement about him. الشيخ بن باز ولا ولا بن عثيمين ولا رضيع ولا غيرهم صحيح. He says here that he had uh, sub and insult and he was cursing and he said the land of Tawheed and the king of Fahad. So he added that he was cursing 
the land of Tawheed, and also the king of Fahad. He says about him that his affair was that he was a righteous man that died or that repented two months before he died. He mentions that as a result we didn't have thoughts that everyone that comes from the center of the mud is Sunni. We had fear that they were affected or polluted by their sheikh and the ideology of the Khawarij that they were Khawarij in this affair. So he said if this is the case at the time of Sheikh Mubil, we didn't hold everyone that comes from there as being Sunni, we would hold back and he says, if this is that was the case for that time, imagine now where it is occurring therein, this foolishness and stupidity and these statements concerning a group of Mashaikh. So he mentioned in particular the insult relating to Sheikh Ubaid and also he said um, Sheikh Muhammad Abdul Wahab al Wasabi and he said I don't know who else. All of this is uh, speech that is uh, idle speech and void and he advises not to waste your time with these foolish ones. He describes them, Sufaha. And then at the end of the phone conversation, this is what took place. So he asked them, did you record this phone conversation of ours? So they said, yes, we recorded it. There then he says, keep this between us. So he says that it should not be distributed. Those who've heard it, it's sufficient for them, but it should not get out to others. However, someone from them end up distributing it anyways. So after this, Sheikh Yahya responded to this audio once it got out and made public. And this is the first instance that Sheikh Yahya mentions Abdullah al Bukhari by name. So we can see clearly how it started by Sheikh Yahya mentioning Abdullah al Bukhari by name, even though it's harsh, but this is as a result of that audio that got out. <laughs> أراد الشيخ محمد مانع والشيخ حسن بن قاسم الذهاب دعوة إلى أندونيسيا. اتصل له بعض الحزبيين اللقمانيين من هناك أو من جنسهم وشكوا عليه هذه الطارئة والنازلة وهي نازلة so Sheikh Haya mentions and clarifies the reason for this audio. This, this group of those followers of Luqman who are known for Hizbiya and in Indonesia made a phone call to him complaining to him about this emergency affair 
of two mashayikh of Sheikh Muhammad Mani and Sheikh Hassan Qasim al-Raymi coming to Indonesia for da'wah. And he said, uh, as a result, Sheikh Abdullah Bukhari became really irritated. And he was as if he was taken by fear. Uh, it was as if he was taken by fear in relation to the upcoming visit of those two mashayikh. And he was speaking with speech uh, at times in relation to Sheikh Mubil that uh, him and his students were uh, having the ideology of the Khawarij. And also along with that he was warning from the center of the Maj the speech of those who make no sense. So he mentioned Shaykh that the speech of Sheikh Abdullah Bukhari wasn't based upon knowledge or knowing the background of affairs and that he was just uh, merely defending Sheikh Ubaid without going back to what was written and the evidences that were brought forward. This is what uh, the Sheikh had mentioned. And yes, Sheikh had mentioned that he was harsh and he clarifies in the same audio. <laughs> حين أن نسمع منه هذا الكلام وهذا البغي والتوسب من باب قول الله عز وجل وجزاء سيئات سيئات مثلها لا يحب الله الجهر بالسوء من القول إلا من ظلم. So she has says if he was gentle in his words, I would have been gentle with him. But he says what he has uttered of transgression and oppression. Then it is from the angle of لا يحب الله الجهر بالسوء من القول إلا من ظلم. Allah Subhanahu wa Taala does not love for ill speech to be made in public except for the one who has been oppressed. Also, he mentioned the verse وجزاء سيئاتٍ سيئاتٌ مثلها that a person could repel a bad thing that occurred with another bad thing of that which is uh, of its like. Also, Sheikh in his response, he spoke about the affair of Sheikh Abdullah Bukhari requesting that the audio doesn't be distributed. He says also, from what indicates his cowardice, is that he asked uh, at the end. Did you record this? Do not distribute it. Do not distribute it. Shaykh <laughs> says that when I speak, I distribute it and share it on the website because I know that is uh, what I'm saying is of truth. <laughs> So Shikha mentions that when a person 
is uh, guilty of doing wrongdoing and transgression, this is their state. Uh, they just uh, pass around speech amongst themselves and don't want it to get out. And he says, this is what you have been doing of, for people that have been re refuting us on that mysterious website with anonymous names, al Wahyain. They're feeding off you. And he mentions that we will respond to them and we refute them publicly because what we believe what we're sharing is of the truth. So Sheikh says, as for him, he makes a number of insults, calls names, and then at the end of it, he comes and says, did you record this? Do not distribute it, and he makes a dramatic request onto them, not for them to distribute it. So the Sheikh says, Oh, my fellow brother, mentioning the saying that every secret that goes beyond two people is no longer a secret, and every knowledge that is not written is lost. Also, when uh, Sheikh Abdullah Bukhari's audio got out, of this phone conversation, he immediately made a clarification when attention was brought about what he said about Sheikh Mubin. And let's listen to the same response of Sheikh Ha, what he said about that clarification. <laughs> And he began to say that he distributed words after about his speech that he didn't intend it and he didn't mean. So the Sheikh said, how did you say so? Your, your speech was clear, like the clarity of the sun in midday. <laughs> spoke clearly about Ahl Sunnah from the Maj, spoke clearly about Sheikh Mubil and that you don't have good thoughts about them. And then after that, uh, Sheikh Abdullah Bukhari releases another speech, uh, more specific, we'll listen to it. <laughs> هذا الكلام لا يدري ما يخرج من رأسه كما قلت له هم بدعوا من كان عليها وهو يحيى الحجوري So Sheikh Abdullah Bukhari from his speech that he released he was criticizing those who say that these ulama or these mashayikh that spoke about the Maj spoke about the whole of the Maj so he says this person doesn't know what's coming out of his head they didn't did uh, Tabdiya declare innovative to the camels found their in, but they made an innovator declared an innovator to Yahya ibn Ali al Hajuri. And he mentions that this speech of the scholars concerning Yahya ibn Ali al Hajuri. It is based upon proofs and evidence that they have. وبينوا على ذلك وما كان التحذير من كل من في دماج كان التحذير من أشخاص من دماج صحيح وإلا فلم يحذروا من جمع من المشايخ الفضلاء من من كان في دماج لكن الحجور ما كان يمكنهم من التدريس ولا من التعليم وطردهم ها ونهاهم إلى غير ذلك من من لم يوافقه. So he says that it wasn't about everyone that was in the manj, a warning, but it was in relation to, for example, Sheikh uh, Ahmed Ali al-Hajuri. For it, he said there was a group of virtuous mashayikh that were in the manj, that Sheikh Ahmed did not give them a capability to teach, and that he even actually exiled them or kicked them out from the manj. 
because merely they did not agree with Sheikh Ibn Ali al-Hajuri on his position. Uh, I don't know who he's particularly referring to, but really there was, uh, from what I remember, Sheikh Ma'amar al-Qadasi, who didn't have the same opinion of Sheikh in relation to the fitna, but he also was from those who were allowed to teach. Uh, he taught Imla, and there was others of the Mashaykh, I believe uh, Sheikh Ahmed Wasabi used to teach Aqeedah Suwasatiya. So I don't recall who he's referring to, to say these words to be exact and precise and fair. But uh, we know other people that who did not have the same opinion of Sheikh they were still allowed to teach because they were not causing havoc or fitna or what are those other people that were forced to leave because of them causing uh, drama and uh, fitna and division within one markas. <laughs> كانت تأوي أناسا نعم نحن كنا نحث لما كانت على السنة نحث الذهاب إليها كغيرها من دور العلم لكن لما انحرفت صيانة للشباب من الأمة نحن لما عندما نعتقد زيد ولا عمر من الناس هذا منحرف ولا مبتدع كيف ندلك عليه ما يجب هذا غش so he mentions that he used to encourage people to go to Damaj but now he doesn't. He says, how could I, a person, if he warns you from someone that he believes him to be astray and then encourages you to go to him, this is considered to be a deception. Uh, so a question has been read from London regarding Yahya ibn al-Hajuri and those who are followers that still are with him. So this is the next time where Sheikh Abdullah Bukhari also got involved and in more speech about Sheikh Yahya ibn al-Hajuri. So from what Sheikh Abdullah Bukhari responded with, and the full audios of what I'm mentioning are found online for anyone to turn back to it for the full context. عندما تطلب من رسول الله الدليل أما نقول الكتاب والسنة أي سنة هذه سنة من أما سنة النبي عليه الصلاة والسلام So he mentions that the criticism against Sheikh Yahya, he says that he accused the Prophet Sallallahu and that his statement from the destructive statements is his statement saying that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam even though what's added in the audio afterwards it's, it's clear that uh, we're going to play an audio of Sheikh Bahmid in relation to this that the original audio says that Abdullah Bukhari says his statement, Sheikh Yahya's statement that, Sheikh Yahya, uh, that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam his statement is not accepted except with a proof but afterwards, the audio was edited. It appeared that someone came to him or clarified to him that this is not the statement of Sheikh Yahya. But uh, as they say, that it was a statement of someone else that Sheikh Yahya uh, gave permission for it to be distributed. So you can see in the same audio, it uh, still didn't remove Qawluhu, his statement of Sheikh Yahya, and it had it combined between both. So this is something to look into for the person of uh, fairness. We'll look into the matter and see that uh, if this is truthful, uh, something correct. Here we'll play what Sheikh Abdul Hamid pointed out about that. <laughs> بأمر أعظم حين أذن بنشر رسالة في التقرير 
لأن النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم لا يقبل قوله إلا بالدليل so he mentioned the same thing this is what happened how Sheikh Abdul Hamid responded to him he mentions that this part where it says that he gave permission of a treatise that had the statement to be distributed he said this was added afterwards or else the original verdict of Abdullah Bukhari he claimed that this was the actual statement of Sheikh Ibn al-Hujuri that the statement of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is not to be accepted except with a proof and it's unfortunate because this was became widespread and it passed on and now to come to know that this is not the actual statement of Sheikh Ibn so if you listen clearly, clearly to the recording, you can see that it was added afterwards. So he says, I mentioned before that this person, Abdullah Bukhari, is someone that information is merely passed on to him and he shares it. And he's referring to here the likes of Arafat and them. So he mentions that Sheikh never said such a statement and he clarified in the tape for the questions of the people of Ib. And also it's clear that uh, someone that who perhaps told Abdullah Bukhari this uh, wasn't accurate and it most looked like, looked like Arafat. Really he's the one that has taken bits and pieces from the Fali Harbi people of reputation of Sheikh Iha, also Abul Hassan Maribi, and put them together in one book and ascribed it to himself. And then later on, these Mashayikh were given these points, and unfortunately, they have to correct an audio after saying something. So, this is the situation. So, a person could look into this further to examine. Also, from what Abdullah Bukhari responded with, in this audio of his, is the following statement. Uh, just a side benefit, he mentions uh, Abu al-Hassan as Abu al-Fitin. The first one to give him this nickname was Sheikh Ibn Ali al-Hajuri. So I'll just mention this as a, from angle of giving credit where it deserves. And he does mention that as the first to refute uh, Abu al-Hassan was Sheikh Ibn Ali al-Hajuri. We'll listen to that further. Just something for a person to know context. In the book of Abdullah Bukhari, Fatur Rabbani, in refutation of Abul Hassan Suleimani. He mentions that Abu al-Hasan al-Maribi came to him complaining about the criticism of Hajuri and others. So he says, فَطَلَبْنَا مِنْهُ إِثْبَاتَهُ عَلَيْهِمْ So we requested from him to prove that the criticism of Hajuri and them is wrong. So this was mentioned and the context looks apparent that the people that sent it to them were from, the, from these individuals who sent at that time the refutations of Sheikh Ibn Ali Hajuri to Abdullah Bukhari. So he's hearing here that he listened to these audios of refutations, and we'll play some examples of that later on, but we're going to listen to what he says. <laughs> 
So he mentions the fact that he was the first to speak about Al-Hasl Ma'aribi is not important, but the first what's important is that you speak with knowledge. And he mentions this thing about being just when you speak. And then he says about these tapes, he says, A'udhu Billah, only if I didn't listen to them. He said of how repugnant, what I found of a repugnant speech. He said, although I refuted Abu Hassan, I seem to be from those who I went astray, and I wrote regarding that. So here he mentions that is incumbent that the reputation be with knowledge. And after I mention a quote of Ibn Taymiyyah, he gives an example of the reputation that of Shekheha, of those tapes. He said it was like a person just telling a person to get up and ask him, what do you have against Abu al-Hasan? And then he says, Tabban uh, lahu, as a words of showing disgrace to such a person, of wretchedness. And then he says that he, he requested someone else to come and read up lines of poetry. And then this person is saying, urinate on him. And then it was all about urinating. And he says, Kulul Kalam, all of the speech, like of Shekheha, was about urinate on them. This is what he says. <laughs> He said it was about urinate and not urinate. He said it was about foul speech. He's, when he said he was asked about those brothers, about the tapes, and perhaps those people that sent him these tapes, uh, he said that this is the most uh, disgusting of things I've ever heard, or most wrongful of things that I've ever heard. So now let's go back to the audios of Shekhaya. I'll give you uh, titles of them, and you can, a person can return back to them himself. They're available on his website. The first uh, one is Tahdir Ahl al Yemen in Fitnat Abu al Hassan. This one is uh, available, and it's quite long, and I believe it was in uh, two tapes at that time. It's uh, close to an hour and a half, to be precise, an hour and 19 minutes. So let's play some highlights from that, inshallah. <laughs> This is from the beginning of it, and we can hear ayat so far, proofs and statements. We don't hear anything about urinate or foul speech of yet. When 
هذا من خالق الحق تراه دليلا حقيرا وقد ابان رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم كما تواتر عنه من جماعه من الصحابه ومن اشهر ذلك حديث معاويه بن ابي سفيان رضي الله عنه ان النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم قال لا تزال غائبه على الحق ظاهرون وما كانوا ظاهرون الا بالحق ولا يكون عنه الحق يقاتل ويزول له ذلك الظهور او يستدر له او يسمح ذلك الظهور فاهل السنه دائما وابدا يلازمون الحق So you can hear he can even so you can hear he even cites a hadith in that first part of it. Let's listen on further also other parts in the audio. <laughs> So another part in the audio, in the audio ayah with a meant statement and then it has an ayah to support it. So far we hear a knowledge-based refutation. mentions uh, clarifying the reason why he mentions verse that the innovator to one another's are wrongdoers or an oppression to one another another ayah that those who followed one another in wrongness they're going to free themselves from that affair so we can see another ayah in context or reputation which is knowledge based so far okay now let's go to another tape of uh, Sheikh Yahya refuting Abu Hassan al-Ma'ribi titled Al-Haqaiq Al-Jaliya Ala Makir Abu Hassan Bid Da'wat Al-Salafiyya so the clear realities and clarifying the deception of Hassan Ma'ribi to Da'ud Salafiyya. Abu Hassan Ma'ribi al Arba'in Nawawi Abu Labi Saraha wa Atahadda and Yusra Hadal Kaw. Abu Hassan Ma'ribi al Khamsa Ajdam in the Quran, Atahadda and Yusra Hadal Kaw. He mentions that Abu Hassan Ma'ribi hasn't memorized Arba'in and Nawawiya. He said, I challenge him to deny this. He says, I he didn't memorize at least five juz from the Quran. He said, uh, he's known to be a person just from phone to phone, programs, politics, a person that is reviving the principles of Salah Sawi, of the Ikhwani. And he said he, he accuses the students of Sheikh Mubil to be Haddadis. And this is from the first who accused me this accusation. It was Abul Hassan Ma'ribi, Sheikh Ahmed Najmi was from those who defended the students of Sheikh Mubil from this accusation. <laughs> and Sheikh brings a point against him that the people that Sheikh Mubil had produced are these students before him. And he's accusing these people that Sheikh Mubil had produced as being Haddadis. So this is from that tape. Also, Sheikh has a, another refutation titled 
كلمة الحق في شيخ ربيع وجهوده في الرد على أبي الحسن uh, words of truth in relation to شيخ ربيع and his efforts in refuting Abu al-Hasan al-Maribi also he has a book a refutation sorry an audio form of tape al-Ibhaj في النقد بعض أخطاء أبي الحسن المصري في كتابه سراج الوهاج or clarifying critical errors of Abu al-Hasan al-Maribi in his book Siraj Wahaj where he mentioned page for page so when you listen to these tapes you hear a knowledge based reputation and uh, also yes maybe at the end of one of the two audios or even both of them there is a Qasida and this is known that from the time of Sheikh Mubbil his reputations he would uh, encourage poetry also to be added in defense for the truth so sometimes poets will get up and read uh, words of poetry against uh, these people who are fell into innovations. And sometimes it may be harsh, as found in some of the written poetry from the time of Sheikh Muba that were extremely harsh against uh, opponents. So this is done, as is known in poetry sometimes. Uh, words may be uttered more harsh than actual in nathar, in literal wording. So this is done for emphasis, this is done for emphasis and is known from poetry. But to say that uh, the whole audio was about urinate on him or to urinate, to be honest myself I couldn't find this in the audio, I tried to listen to all of them and I've been looking for this statement, couldn't find it. And suppose it did exist, to say that the whole audio is no longer a, ref- a knowledge based reputation because of one part in the audio that it did have this, this still would not be fair. But uh, with that, we still didn't find this in the audio. Also, I wanted to mention quickly how Sheikh Ahmed Bazmul got involved in the fitna. It was found in the year 2013 that Sheikh Ahmed Bazmul came to Yemen to visit Fush, the markets of Sheikh Abdurrahman al Adani. And on that visit, he made public statements about Sheikh Yaha. So to be precise, it was in Jumad al-Ula, 1434, on a Saturday. And it was talks about Manhaj. And he concluded his talk by saying, أنا أقول بارك الله فيكم قبل نختم هذه الكلمة المرجو من يحيى الحجوري أن لا يسلك هذا المسلك الواعر والمنزلق الخطر الذي سلكه في تهجمه على العلماء وعلى إخوانه طلاب العلم وإلا فإننا ننتظر حكم العلماء فيه وقد حكم عليه بعض العلماء So he clearly comes uh, and he mentions Sheikh Yahya by name and utters him and a long uh, um, audio and uh, gets involved directly into the affair. This is what's uh, mentioned. So this uh, is transcribed and is found online. And the uh, audio has been shared as well. So it's been uh, transcribed and also it's been shared in audio. Bear in mind Ya Akhwa, that Ahmed Bazmul prior to the Fidna in Yemen used to praise Sheikh Yahya. So he mentions uh, that he was known for his virtues and his knowledge. He was from the students of Sheikh Mubin. And the same thing, Sheikh Yahya, uh, in some of his audios, when he's referring to the refutations on Ali Halabi, he gave reference to the book of Bazmul and requested for it to be shared. Also, at times when he was asked about a book, a refutation to certain Hizbi camps, he gave reference to the book of Ahmed Bazmul. This is available on audio as well. So this is upon us to keep our eyes open on what was the decisive factor to suddenly make this uh, Sheikh or these, uh, what they've said, that he no longer has knowledge, or no longer has virtues, or all this time he was someone that had deviations with him. 
Also, Ahmed Bazmur came after with a refutation, written one, where he titled it, Ya Halabi wa Ya Hajuri Antuma min Amra Zu'at bil Furqa wal Ikhtilaf wa Tamziq al Saf al Salafi, calling out Halabi and Hajuri together, put them together, that you both are from the clearest of those enduring to separate and divide the Salafi rank. And it's long, he writes and he mentions so much. And he calls out Sheikh by name that he was someone that did if sad corruption and his main affair was that he didn't Sheikh did not submit to the advice of Sheikh Rabia and didn't hold him with high regards. This is a long article relating to this and other affairs relating to Ali Harabi as well. So anyone could return back to it, it's available. Uh, as mentioned on the website menhaj.com, uh, basically a summary of points of what was mentioned from this lecture, where it listed foundations derived of the descriptions of the Hajawira or the Hajuriyin and the Haddadiyya and the Halabi. And there was a question from about supposedly someone from the followers of Yahya al-Hajuri. So he speaks about it and then he mentions, he says that uh, Sheikh Abdullah Bukhari has old speech regarding Sheikh Mubbal and his Sheikh Mubbal's old speech regarding the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. He goes, however, he, Sheikh Abdullah, recanted from that and clarified the matter. This is what's mentioned. And at that time, he mentioned when they were together, that he recanted and clarified. It's here also afterwards, when both Abdullah Bukhari and Sheikh Ahmed Bazmul both started to refute one another and then started to bring out old issues that before they considered as being clarified or recanted from. Let's listen to that. So he says, why have you not been uh, criticizing or disapproving the statement of the one that considered Sheikh Mubi Rahimallah of having the qualities of the Khawarij? And he says here clearly that he didn't recant it. And before he said, in that time, that he did, and he clarified. Here he says he didn't. And this is after they started to have a clash with one another, before they were united. Something to look at. And he says the reason why he didn't clarify, or didn't recant, because he made his mistake based upon the understanding of others. And this is what Sheikh was mentioning and others, that this is not a clear recantation from Abdullah Bukhari. And he says what was explicit from his speech is that he meant to describe Sheikh Mubbal from being from Khawarij. And it's the same thing what Sheikh mentioned in criticizing, but at that time Sheikh was criticized by Ahmed Bazmul and also Bazmul was criticizing that person from Maldives for bringing this up against Abdullah Bukhari by him saying that he clarified and recanted. This is if what's uh, been mentioned from this uh, transcript of that lecture. And he says especially the fact that he mentioned this after the death of Sheikh Mubbal. And this also shows that it was something clear as an accusation from Abdullah Bukhari towards Sheikh Mubbal. And there was a few more of that where things that before that Sheikh Ahmed Bazmul was criticizing Sheikh Yahya and got involved in the fitna of relations to, for example, Sheikh Yahya criticizing Sheikh Obeid about a statement about Ka'ab al-Malik. Uh, at that time, Bazmul was using it against Sheikh Yahya, the likes of these affairs. Uh, 
of where he was saying, speaking about the ulama, particularly Sheikh Ubaid and stuff. But later on, after the clash with Sheikh Ubaid and uh, Bazmul, this particular point was used by Sheikh Bazmul against Sheikh Ubaid and, and those who defended him on that. So this is something to pay attention to and this is something to know how uh, the fitin was at that time and how it is now. Also, I want to mention the brother of Ahmed Bazmul, Sheikh Muhammad Bazmul. He didn't have much speech, but the only speech that I've seen was one general and one was specific. This is a specific one. So a question comes to him about Yahya ibn Ali al-Hajuri. He says, I do not know Yahya ibn Ali al-Hajuri. He said, I'm like you all. I take uh, rely upon the spe- statements of the speech of the scholars concerning him. He says, I hear what they say, Sheikh Rabia, Sheikh Ubaid, Sheikh Muhammad bin Hadi, and I follow their speech. He said because he doesn't know this particular individual, and he doesn't have the details about his errors or his affairs. He said he follows the speech of scholars, and his advice for all is to follow the speech of scholars. And you hear from what's apparent is that even if you have someone that could uh, look into the matter or uh, have some knowledge, but just follow the speech of the scholars, uh, even if you don't have the details of what's being said, of the mistakes, and this is what uh, happened, and it looks what this will happen for regarding him. And uh, this is unfortunate. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to guide us all to that which is correct and make us people that do not uh, blind follow other scholars just because of how great they are, especially when they're speaking about someone that was once praised by these individuals and to suddenly just accept the words without jarh uh, mufassar or without clarity or without uh, knowing the authenticity of the details of these statements, especially knowing that it's coming from the likes of Arafat, who have taken uh, bits and parts and pieces from Fali Harbi, and these individuals, ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to allow us to be forgiven for our shortcomings and to guide us all. Subhanakallah wa bihamdik, and ashadu an la ilaha illa anta, wa nastaghfiruka wa natubu ilayka.